Let's bring you up to speed now with our breaking news story. This as the resignation of Speaker of the National Assembly, Nosivua Mapisa Ngakula, has now been confirmed. And uh, part of the letter that she sent reads, today, the 3rd of April, I have submitted to the acting Speaker of the National Assembly, uh, Lechisa Tsenodi, my letter of resignation as both the Speaker of the National Assembly and a member of Parliament of the Republic of South Africa. And she says, Mfundo, the resignation is effective immediately. Mm -hmm. Now, quite a lot that she states there because I even see that she has mentioned that I've made this conscious decision in order to dedicate my time and focus to deal with the recently announced investigation against me by our country's law enforcement agency. So indeed, it is yeah. related to what is happening. Mm -hmm. But quite important that you mention the political fallout or what happens now insofar as the ANC, because we do know that this is where now the step aside rule would come into force once she is charged. Mm -hmm. And as we stated that tomorrow, possibly she would be handing herself over. So one wonders what would then happen there or what conversation took place even today that perhaps maybe prompted her to take this decision that if ever you are to surrender yourself anytime this week perhaps let's manage this and yep. not see a situation where there's a motion of no confidence against a national speaker of parliament that comes from the african national congress and it's interesting uh, because she even says that my resignation is in no way an indication or admission of guilt regarding the allegations leveled against me and uh, i have made this decision in order to uphold the integrity and sanctity of our parliament an apex in Institution of our system of government representing the people of South Africa as a whole. So it's quite interesting because she makes this very clear, but also at the same time, you think about the fact that she even mentions in her letter that as a member of the ANC, I've spent half my life in the forefront of the struggle, defending the freedom of the right and, and the rights of all South Africans. So she is, of course, not oblivious to the fact that this is not only a legal matter now, mm -hmm. there's also going to be the political impl implications. I mean, you think about also in front of the political parties that were also calling for her just as the reports were surfacing to say she needs to explain or she needs to go. Mm -hmm. And it's so close to elections. This couldn't have come at a difficult, a more difficult time for the African National Congress. And again, I ask, could there have been a conversation with the party? Because reports over the weekend were suggesting that uh, the chief, Pemi Majodina, might have possibly wanted a situation where they talk to the national speaker and they don't allow for a motion of no confidence to go through because that would be quite embarrassing and there might be ANC members who perhaps vote with the opposition. So in most instances, you never have an African National Congress that wants to vote with an opposition. Any motion that is sponsored by the opposition becomes a difficult one mm. for the party. Mm. So perhaps this is a more ideal situation for them. And it's going to be interesting because remember even when the allegations surfaced and there was talk about the fact that, um, you know, she could possibly be arrested. We saw the chief whip of the ANC in parliament saying that, no, let's just wait um, and, and, and wait for the investigations. Whatever happens, will then be monitoring this particular situation and whatever needs to be done in terms of the processes will be done. So I suppose even when you look at some of the weekend reports, it does hint at the fact that she was taking this process very seriously but it also for the circles back to um you know the anc and how they've also come under scrutiny especially when they deal with some of their own members or senior members who would be facing serious allegations this is a political party that right now is still contending with some of the voters who are saying what are you doing with the Zonda Commission's report? What mm -hmm. are you doing to make sure that some of those who have been impl impl implicated, how are you dealing with it now going into the elections, particularly over the list process as well? Mm -hmm. You know, you also mentioned that her lawyer has stated that she wasn't necessarily favoured of this whole situation. But you would have heard yesterday Judge Silet Potrol stating that what we have seen is a very courteous law enforcement mm -hmm. insofar as she's concerned. Mm -hmm. Because ordinary citizens in most cases would not have a situation where you speak to law enforcement that my lawyer is not around. Can you please just afford me that courtesy for him to come and to assist me in this processing uh, or rather me being processed through the court system? And also even the NPA during the arguments raising that to say that it is 
unheard of for us to then be held to ransom. That's how they described it, by an attorney who simply could not make a court date. So why are we working at the convenience of this attorney who knew that he should be here in court? But there's been quite a lot of even talk about how she even deals with this particular process. The fact that they were asking for access to the docket and even some of the legal minds saying that, but this is not a process that is usually done. But also, even Judge Pottrell yesterday saying that, how do you know that the case against you is weak if mm -hmm. you still have not even got to the trial stage? So there is, of course, that particular process that unfolds. And even as you say, a lot of people waiting to see what happens now in terms of that arrest process. Mm. And the very serious allegations that in as much as we've seen all of this, some can label it as theatrics, but the very serious allegations here mm. by that former uh, defense contractor, mm. they were talking about 2.3 in bribes. The solicitation of bribes is what she's accused of yeah. to the tune of 2.3. And when just following the timeline and basing this on the reports that are out in the public domain, it's that at some point she went and met with Nombasa and stated that just in case you were unaware who is requesting this, this money, it is I. Mm. Just in case if the middleman was somebody who was probably using her name and stating that she's requesting such and such an amount, at some point it's indicated that she went physically and met Nombasa and stated that it's me that has been requesting all this money. And with these allegations, Mfunda, you also think about the fact that even her lawyers were, you know, kind of hinting that if you're relying on one witness, then how strong is your case? But it's, it's, it's going to be very interesting for her to now then contend with what um, you know this witness is alleging and a lot of people waiting to see then because even as she says in her letter here that this is not an admission of guilt mm. so clearly she does believe that she has a case somewhat and uh, of course um, you know a lot of people waiting then to see if this matter gets to a trial stage what then becomes her defense what then becomes you know her own part of the argument here and does she dispute some of the meetings so it's going to be very interesting to see which aspects of part of this case is being disputed and if you're wondering it's also our question tonight we are asking you about your reaction to the resignation of the speaker of the national assembly she has resigned and she says that this is to focus on the investigations that are currently at play here so are you then surprised by this move there have been calls for her to resign but she now says that uh, she's decided to just do it and also resign mm -hmm. as a member of parliament. And as she has stated, even with her suspension, she had stated that this was purely to sort of maintain the dignity of parliament. So and allow her to focus on this particular process that mm -hmm. she'll now be embarking upon. And uh, it will be interesting to hear what the political parties then have to say in Parliament. I'm sure they were gearing themselves up for that, uh, you know, that that debate that mm. they would have had about this particular matter. Um, possibly some of them were already waiting, gloves off, uh, to really hold no bars here mm -hmm. when it comes to this particular issue. But how does then this change the dynamics in Parliament? And what kind of impact is this going to have on the ANC caucus? Mm -hmm. That is the big question, honestly. The impact of her resignation in as much as it's not an admission of guilt as she stresses but nevertheless one would say that this whole situation has tainted the ANC somewhat and again at a very critical time just almost less than two months uh, before we go to elections but beyond that with the Democratic Alliance it seemed that in most cases opposition was not always acting in concert or in agreement mm -hmm. but this time around there were many smaller parties that were saying yes we support this motion and the interesting thing that when it was accepted by the deputy speaker, there seemed to have also been some sort of a problem there. As far as uh, reports are concerned, it seemed mm. as though there was a problem as to who did he consult on the ANC side before accepting that particular proposed motion. And uh, she has now even thanked the ANC, um, saying that she's informed the organization of her decision and also thanking them for giving her the opportunity. And she says, thank you for trusting me with many senior leadership responsibilities in service of the people of South Africa.